Welcome back to the program. And we have um, from third, we have newly minted treasurer and board member <laughs> David Vineman here joining us, talking about what they had going on there. You guys just had a town hall the other day, right? We just had a town hall yesterday afternoon. Yeah, and how, what do we get? What do you guys get from those things? I know they're important. It's a chance for the community to come in and kind of talk and, and yeah. uh, non-agenda items, kind of thing. Yep. Um, it's probably the best way that we have to find out what's really mm -hmm. on people's minds mm -hmm. and what they're most interested in. Mm -hmm. um, it does help us set up set our priorities, and it's something that we talk about in our meetings. Right, right. It's, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, if it's a free for all, come on in. We'll go back and forth, and you guys have the opportunity to talk without an agenda, agendized thing. Oh no, you have time limit here, and all those kinds of things, right? Right. And you know, one of the things we were talking about yesterday was um, the upcoming board elections. We're going to have mm -hmm. uh, three openings, but um, uh, by the end of the meeting, several of the people who were interested said. I don't know if I could stand up there in front of one of these town halls <laughs> with all the people uh, griping and complaining, but the way we look at it, it's not griping and complaining, it's people sharing their concerns. Yeah. And just for folks who don't know, if they want to, if you want to run, you have, there are some openings in the board for the third. The deadline to turn in your paperwork, all your information, candidate info is going to be the third as well, July third, July five o'clock, right here in this building, the community center. Right. And uh, so make sure you get those in. And uh, if you're interested in being a candidate, um, if people aren't interested in being on the board, jumping right into that. Um, right. Are committees a great way to kind of serve and kind of get a taste and flavor for how the, how the whole thing works? Yeah, one of the things that we do, uh, of course all our meetings are open and before I joined the board, I went to board meetings for a year mm -hmm. uh, just as a member of the audience, but we have advisors to some of our most important committees and uh, the, uh, uh, the advisors are a great way to get to know the people uh, get to know how the board works, get to know what the process mm -hmm. is. Yeah, so it's a great way to kind of get your feet wet without actually having to run for anything and, and exactly. have that long service term of two years uh, for some folks. Um, let's talk about what you guys got going on here. 2025, we have a complete first draft of the budget. You should be very happy that, with that as the treasurer. Yes. <laughs> we are, um, we have just passed one of our milestones. The first draft of the budget is essentially complete. We'll be reviewing that in a couple of weeks. And um, uh, then we'll uh, give revisions to staff, mm -hmm. and re staff, staff will incorporate that into the budget. Mm -hmm. We get a second look at it to see, okay, what impact is this uh, going to happen? Yeah. Uh, what, what, what is this going to have? Right. And, the public, and you give change. the public a chance to take a look at it, too, and maybe make some yeah. comments there and say, hey, what if we move some things around here? Um, you know, maybe some good ideas come from that as well. And our budget meetings are open. Mm -hmm. And right. we invite everybody to attend the budget meetings. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, we publish the agenda uh, packets in advance uh, so members can take a look. Uh, to see what we'll be considering. Okay. And what are some of the priorities in terms of the budget, in terms of demands? Well, it's a balancing act. Right. The, uh, the buildings that we're in are all 60 years old, mm -hmm. and they're showing their age, and they require some maintenance. Right. So we have really three priorities. Uh, the first priority is state law requirement. We have to keep our reserves up, right? Because those reserves are going to want, or what are going to keep these buildings in good shape for the next thirty years. Mm -hmm. And the uh, 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 the second uh, priority is providing services, uh, landscape maintenance and construction, right? Uh, manner alterations uh, to all the uh, all the third. Uh, uh, matters, and there are a lot of things that we could do. A lot of things that people ask us if we would do. We say we'd be happy to if you'd be willing to pay fifteen hundred dollars a month. <laughs> yeah, if you want, if you don't mind raising up the fees, we can, and, we can yeah. do all sorts of stuff. But you know, a, a lot of our older residents, they they, they simply can't. I mean, right, uh, right. You know, uh, these are uh, elderly people on fixed incomes, so. Uh, uh, Probably our most important priority, consistent with the other two, is holding the line on monthly dues increase. Mm -hmm. uh, we hate them as much as residents do, mm -hmm. and we do our best to keep them reasonable. Okay. 
And um, and those are those are the big things, right? Because the the it's it's that balancing act, like you say. People want the services. Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't yeah. you doing this? But yeah. then you say, okay, like you said, if you want to raise the hikes, we can we can afford those things. Yeah. But you know, the the reserves aren't this piggy bank that you go to anytime you want, you know, to go get a snack or candy or dessert. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the uh, uh, California law is specific on what we can use the reserves for. Mm -hmm. And the oversight that are given to the reserves is not just our oversight to mm -hmm. the reserves, but every three years, uh, we have an outside consultant come in and uh, uh, do a review of the reserves, the reserve adequacy, and then do a projection out, mm -hmm. how are we doing? Mm -hmm. And we've been able to uh, maintain our reserves at what's considered the uh, uh, the adequate level, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, which is, uh, uh, that's our target, and then as we go along, we build them up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So um, some of the other things you guys did in terms of the uh, the recap of the meeting? Yeah. The, yeah. Ba the bathroom splits? What's a bathroom splits? Okay. A bathroom, <laughs> a, a, a bathroom splits have gotten more popular in the uh, last few years, and that is when um, uh, a uh, owner of a manor takes a larger bathroom and splits it okay. into two smaller bathrooms. And there was some, this was uh, the change that we made this month, really a routine change, no big changes. Uh, it's uh, uh, come to our attention that the, uh, uh, the language uh, was a little bit outdated. Okay. So we uh, updated, the, uh, updated the language. And then uh, the other item, this was a pretty routine month, really. Uh, the, other, the other routine item um, is uh, block walls mm -hmm. uh, in some manners. Um, a lot of the uh, single story manners. Uh, uh, residents would like to put a block wall around, say, a patio or mm -hmm. a, a portion of their manor. And again, we had to update the uh, language on that mm -hmm. uh, just to bring it in line with uh, current practices. Right, it's you know, a pretty so straight building forward. standards that you want to make sure you're yeah. meeting and that kind of thing. You can't just be plywood up against uh, block yeah, walls. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you can't build you can't build a block wall that makes a fortress. You've mm -hmm. got to have. Yeah, you got a window. You got a way out. When you're if you're if you're taking away an exit, you need to have something in there. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, and then the updating the financial requirements for purchase or lease. Yeah, the um, um, we didn't really make major substantive changes to these either, uh, but we've been considering the financial requirements uh, because you know in the early days of condominiums and, and homeowners associations. Uh, it, People would get into um, uh, units that they couldn't afford. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've had the financial requirements uh, for years, and we didn't raise them substantially. We just want to make sure that anybody who moves in has the means okay. uh, to continue to support themselves. So it's kind of like a check on their reserves and how they're going to be able to. <laughs> exactly, exactly. OK, so just, yeah, because you, obviously you don't want, you want people to come in, you want people to leave here, but we all, the, the last thing you want to do is have evictions going on yeah. and people are not, not unable to maintain, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's obviously a big deal. Um, so water damage restoration costs. We had some really, last two years, we had amazingly high rainfall in Southern California. Exactly. And a lot of ours, uh, a lot of the water uh, damage restoration cases uh, that, uh, we, uh, uh, that we have, uh, some of them are due to the rain. A lot of them are due to the aging pipes mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. in our units. Mm -hmm. And uh, water damage, ask anybody who lives on the first floor of a garden villa, a three-story right, building. Right. <laughs> and they'll tell you they look at their ceilings with a little bit of trepidation. <laughs> um, because what, what can happen is there can be a problem with pipes. Uh, probably the most frequent uh, problems that we see, and we're in the middle of doing uh, a bunch of uh, uh, water damage restoration hearings, uh, because we're working through a backlog. Uh, but a lot of the um, uh, a lot of the hearings end up around toilets that weren't properly seated, mm 
mm -hmm. uh, or toilets where there's a wax seal, mm -hmm. where it uh, uh, attaches to the floor, and those wax seals can go bad. All right. And the, uh, <clears throat> those are probably the greatest risk of property damage mm -hmm. that our manor owners have mm -hmm. in our multi-story buildings. Right. Because the water goes straight down. Mm -hmm. And they're actually, when that happens, there are two different kinds of damage. And a lot of people who come before us in the water damage restoration hearings, they don't understand this, which is why I wanted to mention it again this morning. Sure. In uh, any building, you have really two parts to the building. One is, of course, your neighbors and their manners, but the building itself is the property of the mutual. Mm -hmm. So when there's water damage, um, there are really two sources of claims that a uh, manor owner can be exposed to. One of them, well, it's claimed for your neighbors when your water dripped down and ruined their floor. Right. But the other is water, um, uh, uh, water damage issues also affect the structure of the building. Mm -hmm. So when one of those happens, uh, the mutual has to go in and we have to repair the damage mm -hmm. uh, to the structure of the building. And even if your neighbors are insured against the damage to their unit, you can still be liable to the mutual. Mm -hmm. And we do have people who come in and say, well, you know, um, I settled up with my neighbors. I don't understand what this is all about. Right. So we explain to them, well, this is for damage to the building. And it's another reason why it's so important for manage owner, uh, uh, manor owners rather, uh, to have um, uh, HO6 insurance, which is the type of insurance that is specially designed for condominiums. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if you don't have these, uh, if you don't have HO6, on a damaged water restoration claim, it's not unusual to see the damage to the building be $15,000. Yeah, and that's not something that people are just sitting on around here. No. <laughs> you know, we're, uh, we're all trying to enjoy our retirements here. And uh, so, you know, we really urge people, even though the price of insurance is going up, mm -hmm. don't scrimp on that HOA, ins uh, that uh, HO6 insurance. Keep yourself protected. Yep, yep. I, I'm an upstairs unit, and I have had two times where water has gone down to my folks <laughs> yeah. down there. So yes, I know exactly what we're talking about here. Um, like you said, it can be it can be really expensive, in excess of twenty five thousand yeah. dollars, and that's that's a huge kind of thing. Um, what about uh, other things like we're talking about in terms of like uh, battery operated uh, smoke alarms that can be damaged? And yeah, there are. You know, when, when we do the damage restoration hearings, we see a list of all the things that are damaged. Electrical can be damaged. Mm -hmm. uh, you have asbestos uh, concerns because that's going to disturb the asbestos that's sitting on top of uh, most of the ceilings. Right. It's harmless as long as it's not disturbed. Yeah, the second you open up those ceilings, though. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's one of the reasons why we recommend to people uh, the easiest, least expensive way that you can help protect yourself against uh, water leak intrusions is with a water leak alarm. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, we've all got them for our water heaters. And, you know, for a lot of us, we think, okay, yeah, I've got a water leak uh, alarm and I've, uh, you know, got it by my water heater, which is, you know, the biggest risk. We don't see that many water heater leaks. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in my unit, and I'm on the third floor, so I worry about my neighbors downstairs. So I have 11, uh, I have a three bedroom, and uh, I have uh, a little, it's just a little battery operated water leak detector. Right. I have one by every sink, have one by every toilet in the unit, have one by every shower, and I just got two more because I realized I didn't have one by my dishwasher. Uh -huh. I didn't have one by my refrigerator. 
And the installers that come and uh, put in these appliances don't always do the best job. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, and that could just be a faulty thing, or like you say, old old pipes and old whatever it is that yeah. that seals. So all sorts of different reasons why that's such an important little gadget to have. Yes, it is. And the um, the newer ones, you can find them on Amazon, really inexpensive. Uh, battery operated, they connect to a base unit that plugs in, and if there is a leak, any of the water leak detectors will detect it and send an immediate notification uh, to your uh, 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 to your cell phone so that you can... Uh, and that's a good thing that you're away because you're not always home when a leak yeah. can happen, right? You, people have come home from vacations or just work and discovered the leak has been going on for a while. And we get those cases. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times before they get home, the downstairs neighbors will find out about it. <laughs> and one of the things uh, that we remind people of periodically, the village maintains a key file program completely voluntary, and uh, the keys are locked up, and the only time the keys are used is if there's a water leak, if there's a reason that security or uh, a plumber needs to get into your place when there's been a uh, uh, water leak, that ensures that they can get in there a lot of times within about 45 minutes, which is gonna really reduce the damage that's caused mm -hmm. by the uh, Water leak. And like you say, the program's voluntary, but probably a good insurance policy to have for yourself. We recommend it. Yeah, I can see that for sure. There's no locksmiths, no delays. That's an important thing, right? So nobody's having to pay extra money to get into your house. Because if you're away, and in some cases, we're going through uh, particularly our three-story buildings, and we're doing fumigation now. Mm -hmm. And uh, what the uh, key file program can keep you uh, from uh, having to do is sit around, wait all day for somebody to come in, or if you're away and there's a water leak, again, uh, what we'll do to try to minimize the damage, we'll have locksmith come out, and that can be expensive. So uh, uh, we, rec we really do recommend, and on the slide, we've got the uh, contact information if people would like to participate. Absolutely, it's a very good idea. Uh, don't delay, you'll be sorry if you don't. Let's just, yeah. let's just put it that way. Yeah. You, you, you think, oh no, I don't need that until you need it. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, like we talked about at the very top, let's talk about it one more time. There are some openings on the board to run. Yeah, we are looking for qualified candidates for the, um, uh, for the board, and we're looking particularly for people with business experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, a lot of people there, you know, they think, well, I don't have the qualifications to run for the board. I'm not an expert in this stuff. We're really, we are neighbors helping neighbors. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, uh, a lot of us have some sort of expertise. I do happen to have a financial background. Uh, we have a couple of members on the board, one of whom has construction background another of whom has some landscaping background. But we have very active members on the board that don't have particular expertise, but they're committed to the job, mm -hmm. and just about everybody finds a niche where they know something that a lot of other people don't know about. Right. And it's a, it is a working board. We do spend time. It's not just a meeting a month. Right. But, <laughs> you're on, you're on, most of you serve on committees, multiple sometimes yeah, as well. Yeah, and we serve not only on our own committees, but we also serve on GRF committees. Mm -hmm. So um, there's enough there to keep anyone busy. All right. And uh, for folks, can, again, we're going to tell the deadline is Wednesday, July 3rd, 5 p.m. Make sure you get all your information in. The exactly. uh, forms are available now, but it, you probably should hurry yeah. you know, if you're thinking about it. Uh, and, if you're just, and if you're not sure, start going to some meetings, serve on committee, get your, dangle your toe in the pool a little bit, see what it's like. And if it's for you, run some other time maybe. Okay. Well, sir, thank you very much. I appreciate you coming in. Happy to help out. <laughs> From the third, we appreciate it. Great, great update, and uh, we'll welcome you back again as our new treasurer next month. Great. <laughs> Thanks so much. You're watching this date. We'll be right back.